Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. It's arrived and today I'm going to introduce you to my new machine. Now I'm no psychic but I can imagine many people out there asking the question why a new machine? What's wrong with the old Chinese dragon? He spent the last 18 months house training it. But the answer is nothing. My little machine has taught me a great deal. It's given me hours of engineering challenges and pleasure uh, but mainly it's given me an opportunity to engage in my other hobby which is videography. Now you've got to be thankful for that because without that second hobby you would not have been able to follow my rocky road to learning about this technology. That learning journey has still got a long way to go. It's been somewhat of a surprise to me that my journey has attracted such a huge following. I had no idea that there were so many people out there interested in this technology and as I have proclaimed often I'm not a teacher these are not tutorials and I'm no laser expert. Now as most of you will know I'm supposed to be retired. Uh, I'm not so sure my wife fully understands that concept and that's why I try and escape as often as I can to my man cave. Now I no longer engage in any serious commercial activities so with no business to expand but and lots more to learn about the existing machine I can understand your question about why a new machine. Now, buying another machine is definitely most unnecessary. But I'm sure that most of you who are married will have heard your wife's explanation for buying something she didn't really need. But it was a real bargain. Perhaps my female side is becoming more dominant as I get older. Because this was a bargain I could not walk away from. Let me explain a little bit more. My entertaining videos and critical analysis of my Chinese purchase found favour with a UK company that has been in the Yag Laser business for many years. Now, they were often being asked to help repair these imported machines and, fair to them, seeing beyond the dubious Chinese quality issues, they could see an opportunity of adding CO2 technology to their portfolio provided it was done in a professional way. So they set about developing a close relationship with the Chinese machine manufacturer and went about completely redesigning the electrical and interlock systems to comply with European safety and machine build standards. Now they chose the best Chinese parts available including recce and EFR tubes. They specified servo control systems instead of stepper motors and now they're selling a top quality Chinese machine with full UK support they approached me with a view to making some of my videos that were not corporate advertising but much more of the informative type of training aids for their website using uh, if you like my critical and analytical approach that had initially caught their attention. From my point of view I recognized the opportunity of answering lots more technical questions about servo and stepper motor comparisons and also I could see the possibility of getting answers back directly from China. Now all I can say about the deal that we finally settled on is that bartering is very tax efficient. Now before we start looking at this machine in any particular detail um, I just need to make it clear that this machine is mine to do what I like with. I can modify it, I can criticize it, I can praise it I'm not in any way committed to Think Laser to do anything corporate with this machine. My commitment to them is to make some training videos um, that they can use on their website. I'm extremely happy with the deal and if I do sound as though I'm doing a little bit of advertising please ignore it because I'm not. What I'm trying to do is now tell you what I get with this package. Now it's not a sales pitch, it's just to try and make you a little bit jealous if you've gone through the same pain that I went through when you bought your Chinese machine originally. This is a Chinese machine but with a difference. So first of all let's have a quick look at the package. Well, it's part of the, uh, the standard package. We'll get the uh, air assist pump. We've got a toolbox with cables and some 
of spares in it actually. The lenses, we've got a two inch lens, we've got a two and a half inch lens, and I think we've got a four inch lens. Um, whether I should be able to make any use of a four inch lens with a 60 watt laser is another matter. A little memory stick for transferring data to the machine. We don't have a network connection on here. Yeah, there's an ethernet connection on the, uh, on the controller but they haven't brought the ethernet connection out anywhere. And in addition to that, I think Laser have supplied us with a first level spares kit, um, which contains a lens removal tool, a spare mirror, another sensor, and this little book here, which is not really a book at all. It's a memory stick, which contains the operation manual and the data sheets for the machine. So, I shall have to have a look at that. That's a nice little touch. And another nice touch is this little, uh, this little plastic case here. And in this plastic case we have a lens cleaning kit with a laser optic cleaning procedures. It's a set of instructions and all the kit that you need to clean and look after your laser machine. And then we've got isopropyl alcohol and acetone buddies and liquid compressed air here. So we've got a very nice little kit of parts there. And then finally, as part of the standard kit, we get an industrial 3000 chiller. Well, it's called an industrial chiller, but basically it's nothing more than a tank, a pump, and some a fan with some bits of pipe in there that will allow it to do a little bit of radiation. So it's not a proper chiller chiller, it's just a cooling system. And as an optional extra that has been um, negotiated into this deal, um, we've got a Purex fume extraction system, which basically means I can, I don't have to blow this one out through my workshop door. I'll turn my fan off now. I suppose it is slightly quieter. It's a bit more like a vacuum cleaner, isn't it? It's nothing more than a personal observation and opinion at the moment, but they don't look big enough for the airflow that that unit over there is trying to draw. And it's putting a, an undue load on the motor system in there. Um, at the moment, the tube is not in here. So I've, got, I've chosen to have a 60 watt EFR tube. Um, if you go above 60 watt, 80 or 100 watt, you'd be supplied with a recce tube. So, they haven't skimped on the tubes themselves. They've put the best quality ones in there. Now, at the moment, the machine has no power on it because um, the installation engineer is coming to do that for me. I'm being very, very lazy. I could have the machine powered up and ready myself, but... Um, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that somebody else is going to come and do it for me. Well, the first thing we notice about the machine is everywhere is accessible. And we can take a look at the servo drive system. Everything is fixed down with uh, stainless steel cap head screws. The final drive onto the head is about 24 or 30 teeth. Again, very neat screws. Everything looks, everything just looks neat and tidy. It looks like a proper engineering job. To some people's dismay, they will say, oh, you've gone for a plain pulley again. I can't see that a plain pulley is that much of a disadvantage, to be honest. I would think that that's quite a good move. Again, when we start looking at the drive system in the back of the machine here, we find that it's probably got something like a 24 or 30 tooth pulley on it. So it looks as though it's the same gearing system for both the X and the Y axis. So we've got a very nice chunky aluminium cross beam on here. Um, it looks really nice and stiff. And similarly, we've got a smaller but very nice aluminium extruded cross section here to support the, uh, the Y rails. Now, I can see that there potentially might be a problem here because we've got a steel rail which is fixed to an aluminium section on both of these rails. In the sort of temperatures that we receive here in the UK, I don't think I'm likely to have a problem. 
but if this starts going up to 40 or 40 degrees C or something like that in warmer climates then the differential expansion between this aluminium and this steel because they look as though they're rigidly fixed together could result in um, the rail bending dipping in the middle and these rails dipping in the middle as well. I don't think it's a serious issue but I think it's something that I will keep a bit of an eye on um, because it was one of the things that I was always taught you should never do when I was designing machines myself. We've got a stepper driven Z axis which is controlled by this pen which is basically just a switch. Now I notice that the air assist has got no regulation on it and so consequently at some stage in the very near future when the uh, when the engineer has done his installation I shall probably be snipping that tube and putting my own little regulation valve in there so that I can close the air supply down for when I'm cutting acrylic. Right well let's just take a look in here and see what we find. The first thing we note is that all the doors have got little uh, seals on them and I don't think that's to keep the air in or out, that's mainly I think to stop the doors from vibrating. What we've got in there is a nice clean big cavity, <clears throat> nothing in there at all. We've got the table which is the, we've got the stepper motor here, the Z stepper motor and this table is really nicely engineered, it's, it's really rigid. Now the unit comes with a slatted table which is made from anodized aluminium section so any beams that are reflected off there well they won't be reflected because they'll be absorbed into the anodize so that's a nice touch there's a slip-in honeycomb table which is steel it's not aluminium but I'm still personally a little bit dubious about matrix tables like this because every time you pass over it with the beam you'll get a little reflection on the back and as I do a lot of card cutting I can see myself not wanting to use this. It may be okay for cutting things like uh, acrylic where you've got a protective shield on the back and it wouldn't matter if you get a little bit of a reflection. I think we might have to do something about that, put a little handle or something on that to get that out. OK, let's have a quick look in here, which is the control cabinet, and see what we can find. And I have to say that what we can see in here is a proper piece of machine engineering. This is a, a properly wired electrical circuit. Um, everything is nicely numbered and coded, and I suspect I should get a full circuit diagram. These are all the safety interlocks here and uh, obviously these are the two servo drives and the stepper drive and then we've got our um, 6442 controller. So everything is nice and familiar and it's all very nicely laid out. I mean there's nothing crowded in there, it's all very nice and neatly laid out and down at the bottom we've got the high voltage tube power supply. Now even though the table in this machine is uh, 600 by 400 as opposed to my other machine over there which is 500 by 300 so I've got an extra 100 millimeters on the table the width of the machine is only about 40 millimeters bigger. So it's still a very nice compact machine size. We've got an interlock on and off so that nobody can come along and fiddle with the machine and it's um, we've got a good old emergency stop button there. Now the other thing that's interesting are these two lights here. Um, it doesn't tell me what they are. But the good thing is, it's supplied with an ammeter. Now there's an interesting note on there. <laughs> For me in particular, do not leave the machine unattended whilst processing. Well, to be fair, my fire happened after I'd finished processing, so that note wouldn't have had any effect on me anyway. 
And I think I'd just like to close this introductory session on this new little machine that I've got, the light blade. And uh, I'd like to actually thank Think Laser for giving me the opportunity of using the machine and B, for having the courage to go out to China and completely rework a machine to make it into something that's a decent engineering job.